Good evening, everyone. It's Jim here. Welcome uh, to the second in our new series of live streams where we're looking at uh, Unit 2, BTIC National Business Unit 2, developing a marketing campaign. And the idea of these sessions as we approach the next sitting of Unit 2 in early January 23 is to help guide learners through what's involved in getting ready for and during the assessment. And uh, we're breaking this down into a sort of an assessment focus approach. So last week, session one, which available, is available uh, on catchup at tutordu.net forward slash live. We took a look at uh, the first part of activity one, which is the rationale, the marketing aims and objectives, which means that we're now looking at the next assessment focus, which is all about the marketing research. And in particular, looking at the marketing research pack you get given and how to use it. So hopefully you find it useful. Please uh, feel free to say hi in the live chat. And uh, as we go, this session lasts about 30 minutes, hopefully not much more than that. Uh, a chance uh, to ask any questions as we go. I'll try to pick them up from the, uh, from the live chat window just to the left of the camera here. And uh, well, feel free to ask away. And I'll pause the session a couple of times for ask for your thoughts on a bit of the information we've got. Let's switch over to uh, this screen here just so I can quickly show you what we're going to cover in the next 30 minutes or so. Um, by the way, this session, as with all our live streams, is recorded, so you'll be able to watch this, if you wish, again, and also download the PowerPoint that comes with it. I'll send you that link at the end. We're going to take a look at the research pack. We're going to have a think about what the examiner has said about how students or learners uh, could do better, what they really need to focus on uh, in, uh, in Part A and in Part B, the three-hour exam. Then we'll just work through uh, an example of how I think you could have responded to the marketing research in one of the recent past papers. I'm going to use the decreal gear case study again, back from January 22, um, which is a good one to use. And then right at the end, if you stick with me, I've got something which I hadn't realized before. I think I've found a way from the information you get given in part A to kind of work out or have a very good idea as to what the two options are going to be in part B, when you finally turn over the exam paper. Um, I've not really thought about this before, but I managed to find it uh, yesterday whilst I was preparing this session. So I thought I'd share that with you to see whether you think it's useful. OK, let's make a start then. And uh, let's start by just quickly reminding you where this research pack comes into play, because it's really uh, the sort of the, the, the centerpiece, isn't it, of, of how you start unit two. Part A, this takes place in the afternoon before the following morning when you do the actual assessment, the three hour assessment, which is part B. Part A, this is where you get to find out what the case study business is, what the case study market is by being given this research pack. And uh, you are allowed two hours to, to annotate, to read, to research the research pack. It's low, low control, so you can have access to the internet, you can research the market, read the information they've given you, refer to your notes, do whatever you want to do apart from consulting with others uh, in order to familiarize yourself with the market and with an introduction to the case study business. You're allowed to write two sides of notes, A4 notes, so I'll mention those in a few minutes. You can take them away with you if your center permits it, but that is permitted. And you then bring those back in along with, if you wish, an annotated copy of the research pack into the exam ready for part B the following morning. So this research pack is really important because it's a great way of starting to become familiar with what you're going to be producing in part B. So that's why this session, hopefully, will, hopefully you'll find it useful. Now, just to remind you where the marks go, there are 70 marks available in uh, unit two in each assessment, and uh, 34 of them are for the first file you produce, which is activity one, which is where you basically uh, pre present a rationale for your campaign, the aims and objectives, and then very importantly, uh, a summary a key point analysis of what's in the market research and how that impacts the case study business before you then go on to justify your chosen options and your campaign as part of activity one. So 12 marks, it's the most marks in activity one uh, available. It's this analysis of the market research you've been provided. That's why it's really worth thinking hard about what the examiners are looking for when it comes to market research analysis. So that's what this session is all about. So let's dive into the research pack. There have been two official research packs issued, the last two sittings, January 22, a business called uh, Decreel Gear, and June, or yeah, May or June, summer 22, 
a, a business called Holy Nutritious. There are two other research packs out there. There was an additional material that Edexcel produced on a business called Calm Sun, which is a plant-based milk product provider. And also there's one I wrote, which we've done on previous live streams called Muttley, which is a dog food producer. So there are quite a few research packs out there and some more on the way from us here at Tutor to You. But let's just think about what's in this research pack. Over to you. A quick word in the live chat, please, if you want. Have you seen a research pack? Have you seen any of the four research packs that I've mentioned there? Maybe just mention in live chat whether you've either seen one or all of them or maybe none of them. What do you think? Don't be shy. Feel free to type your thoughts into the live chat. As you say, no, I've not seen any of them, which will make tonight's session and all subsequent sessions a very pleasant surprise. Uh, Caro's seen Calm Sun. Yeah, Calm Sun was the one that Edexcel provided as a sort of an explanation as to what the research pack might look like. Because don't forget, there have only been two sittings of Unit 2 where the research pack has been provided. Lindsay's seen June 22, which I think was wholly nutritious. Good stuff. So we've seen a few, but for most people, maybe not seen them all. OK, so uh, again, over to you. If I was to tell you that basically there's three parts to the research pack, um, what would you expect to see? And let's start with secondary research. What kind of things would you expect or hope to see? Uh, maybe just type a few ideas into the live chat in terms of secondary research, i.e. information that is not specifically produced for the case study business. So in the live chat, just type a few things that you either know to be in or you expect to see in the secondary research. Whilst I'm just looking at the live chat, Joe's saying, yeah, you've taken a look at uh, Rebecca's Dairy. That was one of the first, in fact, I think that was the first ever Unit 2 exam, I think. I might be wrong. Muttley, which I know well. So uh, quite a few of them out there. What do you think in terms of secondary research? What kind of things might be in there? If I was to tell you that roughly there's three or four pages of, uh, of information in the secondary research. We're not quite sure. Oh, I'm, I, having said that, I spoke too soon, didn't I? Caro saying the market size and key trends in the market, too, right? Yep. Anything else? Anything else you recall seeing in one of the previous RPs, as I say, the research packs? Good stuff. Uh, yeah, industry information. So Carlesian saying industry information. So it is basically about the industry. We're not told much at all about the case of the business in part A. We're told the name of the business and what it does, but basically that's it. You have to wait until the exam, until you see part B, before you learn more about the specific business and about what it's trying to achieve. Uh, Zenki's saying the target market, yeah, Dark Slayer, quite right. Competition, too right. Well, I'll, I'll put you out of your misery if you've, if you've never seen one of these RPs before, research backs, uh, but thank you for adding your thoughts into the live chat. Yeah, so basically it's three or four pages that provide you with an overview of the market, some a selection of some of the key trends, uh, maybe in the last year or two, but not necessarily the whole thing, just a nice, uh, an interesting selection of a few interesting things taking place in the market. Also, you get given some examples of products and prices that are being sold often by the market leader or by leading firms or leading competitors in the market. And also, there'll be some information about uh, two or three, usually marketing campaigns or marketing promotional strategies that have been used recently by some of either the leading competitors or perhaps some of the new entrants or more interesting businesses in the sector. So it's that kind of stuff. Primary research is different. Now, the important thing about what you'll be given here is that this is primary research. It is a research report, two pages. But the most important thing to remember is it's made up, OK? But don't criticise it for being made up because that's what they have to do <laughs> to provide you with some primary research. They have to make it up. You may criticise it in other ways, you may have limitations, but don't criticise the examiner for providing a made up case study. Pretend it's real, pretend the data is real. And what it does, it provides a snapshot of some questionnaires usually that have been conducted and you're told how the survey or how the, the research was conducted, when and where, how many people, and also a summary of the responses to the different questions. And uh, that will be a mixture of quantitative and qualitative data. And lastly, in your research pack, and this is the bit that actually I think holds the clue 
to what you're going to be asked to consider in part B. But actually, I generally think it's the worst part of the research pack, partly because a lot of the information in there is it's pretty pretty rubbish, actually, <laughs> as I go on to. Not all of it, but quite a bit of it is 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 really not very good. But what it is, it's a shopping list of possible items for your marketing campaign. So this is activity two. When you put your campaign together, you suggest you're going to do X, Y, and Z, and here's what it's going to cost, and here's why you're doing it. So information about advertising on social media, information about what it costs to go to an exhibition or perhaps attend a trade fair or send some mail, print mailers out, all that kind of stuff. So it's a bit of research. But as we'll see at the end of this session, in about 20 minutes' time, I actually think it holds the clue to what you might be asked to consider as to which option of the two you're going to recommend. Okay, so that's our research pack. And uh, well, just for the rest of this session, we're going to dive into uh, some snippets of the research pack and try to help you see what the examiner is looking for, looking for you to do when it comes to using the information you've been given. So we're going to dive into this business. We looked at it last week a little bit, Decreal Gear, this sportswear business, which I think was the January 2022, the, the first ever real research pack. And uh, well, this information on the screen there is actually what we got told in part B. So that's quite interesting in the way that unit two is structured. You get to find out most about the business, the really useful stuff in part B. There's very little you can prepare about the business from the research pack. So you have to wait until you get into the exam before you start to think about the specific business. And what you have to do therefore in part A, the two hours before the morning, morning exam, is you have to work with what you've got. So what I'm going to put on the screen here is just a few snippets of uh, information, not the whole thing, but just bits and bobs that I've taken from the Decreal Gear research pack. And really just to highlight the kind of information you get given, but then we'll move on to, well, what, what could I do in the two hours? How might I use this information? Well, let's start with the secondary research. So I've just got a couple of, couple of uh, snags of snags screen clips <laughs> that um, that we've we've picked out from the uh, the secondary information. As I say, typically it's three or four pages of information. It typically starts by telling you what the overall market is that the case City business operates in. So in this case, Decreal Gear operates in the sportswear market, and it immediately starts to tell you a little bit about the size, the structure, the growth of the market and uh, how the, how it operates. Just looking at that information there on the screen, is there, is there a piece of data that you think immediately stands out, or maybe two pieces of data, that you think that, that would be really useful to highlight, annotate, or maybe add to my two pages of notes? Over to you in the live chat whilst I grab a, a sip of tea. Is there anything on that first paragraph or two there you think that would be absolutely gold dust to add to my two pages of notes? What do you think? Every research back so far has always started with an overview of the market before getting into a little bit more detail. Not sure whether you can see what's on the screen there. Maybe if you're watching on a smartphone, it might be a little bit small, but what do you think? Anything in particular that you might highlight? And uh, yeah, somebody's already highlighted the 21% growth in the size of the market. by 2023. So a time frame. This is a growing market. Anything else? Just a couple of pieces of bits on there that I'd definitely be circling or highlighting. Of course, the key with this is not to highlight everything because that's known as highlighting everything. It's not identifying key data. Yeah, I was just looking at, I was thinking, well, definitely I agree with you at the 21% growth in the market. It's a big market. So I'd be saying, well, this is a large market, the UK sportswear market. They're worth 6.7 billion uh, just in the UK alone. Uh, so a large and growing market. That's got to be good news for any business that is established in it or wanting to succeed. We're also told that retail uh, is a dominant channel. However, uh, so the likes of JD Sports and Sports Direct and others. However, 55% of people are now using online purchases to buy sportswear. So yeah, Zenki's just pointed that out in the live chat. Thank you very much. So I think that's a really important point, as we'll see later. 55%. So I think in general, you're looking for, for numbers. 
any kind of percentage growth, any time, any type of data that tells you how large the market is, that's really useful data. And if you can then use that data in your, uh, in your report, then you are applying the data and even better, if you can then add that into your analysis and help to justify the decisions you make, then you are well on the way to high, high marks. Dark Slayer is pointing out uh, the significant sales of uh, JD Sports uh, as one of the major retailers in the sector, a really important retail distributor. Superb stuff. Just picked out some other bits and bobs. Um, we're not, we won't highlight this, uh, spend too much time on this. But as I say, there are two or three pages, or actually typically two pages, of overview of the market. And what they tend to do is then give you four or five bullets that, have, that explain some of the key trends. Uh, so you might pick out from this that yoga wear is particularly strong growth. Uh, not a, not a fan or user of yoga wear, um, but anyway, lots of people are. So that's uh, that's that's a segment of the market that's growing fast. We're also told that this is a market that is dominated by well-established global brands, the likes of Nike, Adidas, Reebok, others. That's interesting, but there are new entrants into the market, but particularly those who are able to enter the market and build a brand based around sustainability, for example, or recycled materials. So lots of it's an interesting market. You've got lots of sort of mass market players, big global brands, but you've also got quite a few small niche operators. And also, this tends this has been the case in the last two papers, the last two research packs. You also get given some useful information about the kind of products that are sold and the prices they are sold at. Now, it's interesting, the last two papers, this has happened both times. You've been given in part A some information about products and prices, typically from uh, either a leading, a leading competitor or an average for the industry. And then you get given information about the case of your business and their prices in part B. And it's a really useful thing to do, as we will see when we look at the marketing mix after half term, when we come to think, talking about our planned pricing strategy in our seven Ps, we can usually introduce this information to talk about how our pricing compares with the competition and what the pricing part of the seven Ps is going to be. Now, here we have our first look, if you've not seen it before, of one bit of the two pages of primary research. This is a market research report. And uh, well, over to you now, just have a quick look. I told you that they, it's a made up report, but you have to forget all about that and pretend it's real. Uh, just looking at the information about the primary research there on the top part of that little table. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Can anyone highlight maybe in the live chat any potential limitations or reservations you might have about the usefulness, the appropriateness, the reliability of this market research report? Just, I appreciate you may not have never seen this before, maybe just seeing it for the first time in 30 seconds and you've got two hours in part A. But what do you think? What do you think to that uh, market research report? Lindsay's asking whilst we're doing that, can students work out percentage changes in their notes? Absolutely you can, as we'll go on to that. If you can you can write anything you like on your notes as long as it's not a pre-prepared marketing plan. And um, yeah, Graham's, Graham and Nori and uh, Nayan Tambuma have also, have all said the same thing. The sample size looks really small and quite rightly a point being um, raised about the potential validity of drawing conclusions from a sample that is just a hundred respondents. That's not really statistically valid. It might be useful in some respects, but it's not really statistically valid. Um, Zenki's saying not very detailed. Yeah, I mean, there's another page of responses, but it's not a massively detailed report. Uh, and the good point about not detailed is you might potentially highlight some information that you think might be useful to know, but which is not in this made up primary research. Um, and I was saying a large range in the sample age, people aged between 17 and 35, likely to be huge differences in lifestyles between those who've been surveyed. Absolutely right. Completely different attitudes often, aren't they, between 17 year olds and 35 year olds. Graham's pointing out the narrowness, the, uh, the, the narrowness of the location. Saturday in a city centre, you are therefore restricting the findings that you're going to get from people who happen to be in a city centre on a particular Saturday. It's not even drawn from the same place at different time or on different days. 
Superb stuff. So, I mean, that's, I, I raised, so, so thank you for those contributions. I, I raised that as being a really important point, as you will see in a second, when it comes to trying to get the marks the examiner is, is wanting to, uh, to award, commenting on the appropriateness and the validity, the reliability of the primary data. Superb stuff. Now, here's the last bit, and, as, uh, and I, I made a really disparaging comment about the, the research on media selection. Of course, it's there for a reason, which is to help students come up with rough costs for putting together their marketing campaign. So I'm not going to be too critical of this. I shouldn't be. However, as we'll see when we work through our session on putting the campaign together, you don't really need to use this. In fact, there's no expectation that you will use it or have to use it. There are some better ways of putting campaigns together, knowing what things costs and then applying to the case of the business. For example, realistic costs. So for example, in this one for Decreel, it said, a typical cost of an influencer post is £110, which will generate between 3,000 and 15,000 new followers per month. Complete nonsense. Anyway, as we'll see, we'll go on. If I could buy 15,000 new followers for, for £110 per post, I'd be doing it. Anyway, uh, we'll go on from this, but I'm gonna, I want to come back to this research media report because I think it holds some really useful, useful clues. Uh, the, uh, there's a question about what you can include in your notes. You, you are allowed to, you are allowed to include analysis of the marketing information. So you are allowed to, the only thing you're not allowed to do, according to the student guide, the admin guide is not allowed to do any pre-prepared marketing plans. That's the only thing that says you're not allowed to do, but we've had it confirmed by, uh, Pearsonet Excel that you are allowed to analyze the information in the research pack and identify, for example, key trends, key information on that kind of stuff. Okay, so I'm just drawing on that, just coming back to that. So you've got these two pages of notes. Uh, one way of doing that is to have some kind of structure that helps you draw out the key themes, information about competitors, information about the market size, perhaps uh, drawing out some of the data, perhaps uh, picking out some of the key trends. And of course, the key there is you're not just going to regurgitate this in your part B. The key is picking out this information and then applying it and using it to develop your analysis, uh, but also then to help justify your choices when it comes to aims and objectives in your campaign elements. So one of the things I've done is I've created a sort of two page word document, which is fine to use, which includes some headings that help you draw out some of the key information, not, not everything. You may find some of it useful. You may decide that you have some a different or a better way of identifying information. So let's just pick out a couple of parts from that um, um, Word document. It's just a framework for helping you identify and draw out information relevant from the research pack. So one part of it is to ask you to think about what, you know, what is the product we're looking at here? It's useful to know. You should know it's sportswear with Decreel gear, but it's worth writing it down. So uh, here's just a little example of how you could potentially summarize that information from the research pack. So you've got it handy when it comes to starting to think about uh, what you're going to uh, suggest for your options and how you're going to justify your campaign. So uh, it's sportswear. What kind of sportswear? It's, well, it's hoodies, it's leggings, it's t-shirts. Who's buying it? Well, actually the information that the second research tells us it's quite a broad range, isn't it, of people? Uh, and in increasingly a broader range, lots of people buying sportswear, not just for exercise, but also for general leisure wear and even, even for, 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 for use uh, in employment at work. Uh, the, the primary research also suggests the same kind of information. How much are people paying? Well, typically there's a price range, but it depends on the garment from anything from 20, 25 pounds up to 75, 80 pounds. We're, we're told in the secondary research, the primary research also includes some information about how much on average people are paying for their sportswear. What influences the price? Well, we're definitely told two or three times that branding is important and that customers tend to prefer to buy from brands. And that's again, supported by the primary research. So that's going to be something which is going to help us influence the pricing part, for example, of our extended marketing mix. It's mainly bought from retail, but increasingly, as we said earlier, online, again, that's going to help us support our marketing mix and our marketing campaigns, our justification. So it's this kind of stuff. You can pick out some key information. So I've just summarized here. I don't think there's any point doing masses of calculations, but just pick out the key numbers. 6.7 billion of, uh, of, of value. 
it's growing. We're told it's growing by 21% over five years, which is about three or four percent per year. Uh, we've picked out the fact that yoga wear is growing strongly. We've picked out how brand awareness and loyalty, brand loyalty is very important. So don't worry about spending too much time writing loads about the research pack. Just try to identify the key themes that you can then use to start to build your response. Okay, so let's just take a step back now and uh, maybe for the last 10 minutes or so, just go through a worked example of how we can actually make this research pack work for us in uh, part A and part B. I know simple, simple place saying, can you set out what's in part A and what is in part B? Well, part A is where you set out your justification, your aims and objectives, analysis of the market research, sorry, activity, activity one is where you do that. Part A is where you look at the research pack. Part B is where you write your two, your two files. Apologies, I'm misreading your, your post there. So part A, two hours, the day before the exam. Part B, three hours, the morning after, the after part A. Well, what's the unit two examiner saying? We've had two sittings so far with, a, with the use of a research pack. And I think some really, really useful information that the examiner is saying, here's what learners or students need to be thinking of. So please don't do what too many learners are still doing, which is just copying out what's in the research pack and, and or even worse, pasting it, copying and pasting it into their, into their documents. Waste of time. That's not what it's being provided for. It's there to provide you with some insights into the market and some themes and some issues that you can then use to develop your analysis. So consider appropriateness, relevance of the research. Don't just copy and paste it all. Don't just make simple statements about what the research says. That only takes you so far. Go on to consider why that's important, how that affects the business, what implications that piece of data, for example, might have for your chosen option or for the elements of the marketing campaign that you're recommending for it. How does it link to your aims and objectives? Expand on the information. Don't simply repeat it. That's how you get to higher levels of mark bands, not just for the 12 marks for research, uh, for the marketing research, but throughout the, throughout the assessment. It's that constant analysis and justification of the information. And also, on a positive note, the examiners are saying that in the last two sittings, the learners who've accessed the highest marks so, for example, the top mark in the, in in the, this 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 activity up to twelve marks, it's where learners have been selective, selective in picking out the key themes that impact the business, the market, and then explaining why they are important and what the implications are. So, actually, that means you write less, but you end up being much more focused on what the key themes are. Let's show you an example. So we, let's go back to decreal gear. We've got 12 marks. How do we use the information in the research pack to write about it in activity one? My suggestion is that you start with the secondary research because it's something you've had a chance to think about overnight. You should be in decent shape to be able to identify from your notes, from the key points you've written down, you should be able to identify the main themes and then consider how they Im impact on the business and the marketing option you've chosen. So here's an example. I would start by writing something like this. By the way, you could do this in the table if you wish. I've seen it done effectively in the table. It works just as well as just some nicely headed pieces. I'd say the key themes from the secondary research, the decreal gear, and how they affect our proposed marketing campaign are summarized below. In other words, you're saying to the, the examiner, I've tried to select what I think are a small number of key themes and focus on those rather than simply copying and pasting what's in the research pack, which doesn't help anyone. And then I'd start with key theme. What is it? Well, I think a key theme from what I read in the research pack was is that, is that sportswear is a large and fast growing market. That should support the objective of uh, growing sales. Okay. OK, well, I now need to explain to the examiner why I why I believe that's a key theme. So I'd start by drawing out a couple of pieces of information from my A4 notes, my two pages of notes. I'd say the UK sportswear market is worth 6.7 billion. It's growing at around about 3 or 4% a year or 21% by 2023. 
And there's also evidence in the research pack that growth is being supported by lots of people starting to buy sportswear, not just for exercise, but also for general leisure wear. So that's a key theme, isn't it? Good market. It's a big market. It's a growth market. That's all you need to say from the research pack. What you then need to do is to explain and analyze and justify what that means for the marketing campaign. So I would say something like this is good news for Decreal Gear because, and then explain in a sentence or two what the implications are. So I'd say there's little in the research to suggest that demand for sportswear will fall. And Decreal's target customers, 25 to 35, fitness enthusiasts, so drawing from the information in part B, are likely to continue to spend on new garments as they do their favorite, favorite fitness activities. However, the strong size and growth of the market might also encourage new entrants to target to Creel's customers. So it's not just saying great news. It's saying there might be some downside to the fact that the market is, is, is attractive, might be some new entrants. So that to me is enough for that, that theme. I want to move on to another theme because all I'm doing is I'm analyzing and summarizing what I've found, what I think is important from the research pack. So let's just do one more. Uh, here's another theme. Retail is dominated by a few retailers, but online distribution is increasingly important. So a quick summary of what I found. Well, I was told, or the research pack said that JD Sports, Sports Direct, are selling the big brands and they're selling their own brands because Sports Direct own a lot of brands. And, you know, they dominate the retail space. It's really hard for a business like Decreal Gear to get their products in the retailers. However, the good news is 55% of people were told and now buying sportswear online, and it looks like that's a growth channel. Good news. So that's all I need to say. I've summarized that little bit of research pack. Now I need to say, well, why is that important for Decreal? The growth of online sales is good news for Decreal because. And then the examiner just wants you to see, make it analyze and make the link. And how does that justify the implications for your marketing campaign? So uh, Decreal only uses online distribution. We were told that. That supports the use of social media content and advertising as part of our marketing campaign, particularly targeted at this very precise demographic, age 25 to 35, uh, fitness enthusiasts, pretty easy to find them online, really. However, that sounds good news. However, Decreal is likely to face strong competition in online promotion from big brands and other entrants targeting the same people. So just because it's, a, it's an attractive and growing online demographic doesn't mean that you're, they're going to fall into your lap. And I just think that will do. That will do for a little summary of that particular key theme. I reckon if you did maybe one, one more key theme, perhaps around price or one more key theme around, I don't know, um, I don't know innovation or sustainability, it doesn't really matter what it is, as long as it's relevant to what you're proposing for your campaign, that would do it for the secondary research. That would do it. Move on to the next part of the 12 marks, which is commenting on the primary research. Now, let me take a slip of tea whilst we think about this. The examiner has said, I think in both the last two sittings, actually, that this is an area where learners could do a bit better. Just an extra minute or two commenting on the appropriateness and the reliability of the primary research is really important. So please do it. When you when you sit unit two, don't just say it's primary research, it's all fine, or don't comment, don't, don't even not comment about it. Comment on the limitations and the strengths of the primary research, and also in terms of what it helps, it helps uh, tell you about the business. So, here's an example of how I would do it. I've only got two or three minutes to write this down, four minutes maybe, so I want to be quite precise. So, I'd say, in fact, I think I'd always say the primary research in the pack in the RP is useful. However, it has some limitations. Now, just saying that isn't enough, clearly. You need to explain why you think that's the case. Well, I'd start with the limitations. So I'd pick your points that you provided in the live chat there. I'd say the main limitations on the reliability of the primary research are the small sample size and the timing and location of the sample. So that's fine as far as it goes, but to really Convince the, the, the examiner that you've thought about this, why it's a limitation. Explain a bit more. Well, a sample size of 100 is unlikely to be representative of the overall population of target customers. It's just 100 people in a particular place on a Saturday. Similarly, the data was only sourced from one location on one day. 
So therefore, there's, there's a concern about the reliability of the sampling. And then also, I think another limitation is we're not told anywhere in the primary research whether any of those people have ever heard of decreal gear. It'd be really nice to be able to know how aware, if anyone is, about the decreal gear brand. So that would be a nice extra piece of information that would help reduce the limitations of the primary research. However, then don't just say it's rubbish. The sample size isn't big enough. Say something positive about the primary research. I think it's really important that you you provide a balanced response. So talk about the limitations, one or two ways, but then make sure you say something positive about how useful the insights are, either quantitative or qualitative data. Pick out a couple of examples. So for example, it provides confirmation of the secondary research about the importance of brand awareness and loyalty. It does. The second page of the report talks about how important brand awareness is, how people tend to prefer to buy from brands. It also highlights, and this is really striking from the data, how important uh, discounts and loyalty schemes are to customers in this segment. Okay, so I think it says something like 95% of customers uh, value discounts and loyalty, uh, loyalty discounts and, and loyalty schemes as being a valuable part of buying sportswear. Um, so I think that's a, that's a really useful thing to come out of the research and you could then use that when it came to supporting your chosen option and your chosen campaign. So that's what I'll say about the primary research is don't ignore the primary research. Don't just list it all out. Don't just report on what it says. Comment on how appropriate it is. Comment on how reliable it is, but be to show some balance. Limitations, but also pick out at least one useful piece or one strength of the primary research. And hopefully, if I just go back there, what have we done? We've done a bit of key themes, two or three key themes and why they matter. And then a little bit about the primary research. I reckon that's enough for the market research part of activity one. Hopefully you get top band up to 12 marks and 12 marks in total is a near pass where it was back in, in the summer. So lots of marks going for analyzing the market research. Now I mentioned right at the start, got a couple of minutes left. I just spotted something whilst I was looking at the last two research packs that I thought was quite interesting. So I just wanted to share it, share it with you for a minute or two. I don't know whether this will happen again in the next sitting of unit two, but it might. So look out for it. I was thinking, well, yeah, how, wouldn't it be great to have a feel for what the options are going to be? Because don't forget, you have to choose one of the two options and then build your campaign around it. It'd be great to know what it, what they were going to be roughly, wouldn't it? It turns out there were some clues in the last two research packs. So just to show you how this worked, how I discovered it. When I was looking through part A for Decreal Gear, all it told me was that Decreal Gear was a sportswear business and that the business owners want to increase revenue. That's all it told me in the task brief, part A. Then you went into the research pack. I thought, okay, well, fair dues. Now, when we finally see part B, the morning after in the exam, we get given a lot of information about the business and we're told the marketing aim is Decreal Gear wants to increase revenue through increased brand awareness and loyalty. And surprise, surprise, the two options are, uh, option two, introduce a loyalty scheme and option one, increase brand awareness, create content for social media to provide information using online videos, training programs. So in other words, the two options were outlined to you at the start of part B, the start of the three-hour exam. And I thought oh, that would have been really useful to know the morning, uh, the afternoon before I could have a think about it. It turns out it was in there. Have a look at that. The line at the top of the research media selection bit at the end of the research pack gave the game away. Is that fair? just told us what the two options were that they were thought looking at. This was part A. Decreal Gear has researched the following options for increasing revenue through increased brand awareness and loyalty for their sportswear products. Increasing brand awareness, increasing loyalty. Actually, those were the two options that were then going to be presented to you in part B. I thought, that's, that's, why didn't I pick that up before? And it's interesting, what then followed was useful research uh, media selections that will be relevant to one or both of those 
two options. Wow. I wish I'd known that before. So I thought, well, I'll go back and have a look at the last paper in the summer. Does, did it happen again? And would you believe it? It happened again. So in part A, all we were told was the business owners want to maintain their revenues. This was a, a fresh food box business that sends you boxes of ingredients that you can turn like magic into beautiful food. Great. And when we roll up the morning after in the exam, we're told that the business um, wants to maintain their revenues. And the two options are posting social media content to show uh, to, to, to allow customers to engage with the, the ingredients and the content or running stalls at local markets to persuade people to subscribe. Those were the two options. And I thought, hang on, let's go back to what we what we all told in the research media selection. Surprise, surprise. Holy Nutritious has researched the following options for improving customer engagement. In other words, the two options were going to be as it turned out, engaging, getting more customers to engage with the product, not necessarily just about increasing revenues. As it turned out, the options that were given in the media selection also very heavily focused on the costs of running stalls at exhibitions and local markets. So again, there was another clue, I think, within the information that was being given, the costs of running for example, at food fairs and local markets. Um, and of course, I should have seen it all along because that was that was going to be one of the options because in part, oh, they said, improving customer engagement. And then they gave me a whole bunch of options for running a, a food stall. Should have seen it. Did you see it? Have you seen that before? I must admit, I, I should have read that first line in the market research or the research on media selection more carefully. So it'll be interesting to see in the next unit too, whether there's also another clue in there as to what the options might be. But if it is, that's going to be a useful thing to think about as we get ready uh, overnight between part A and part B. Simple's asking, what do we do in part A then? Well, part A, you work your way through the research pack. So what well, a great time just to summarize this session. Part A, you've got two hours. That's loads of time to read through the research pack, to, to understand and pick out and highlight some of that key market information, some of the key statistics, the key trends, the key products, information about who buys, distribution channels, all that kind of stuff, to look through that mini primary research and think, what do I think? Is it a big sample? Is it useful? Who have they asked? What have they said? What's missing and what would be better? And then also look through that research on media selection to see if there's any clues as to what the business is trying to do beyond just the first line in the set task brief and see what kind of marketing campaign activities they're providing you costs on. That might be a useful clue as to the kind of options that you're going to be asked to consider. The two options when you roll up to do part B, the three hour exam. But just to summarize on this session, though. With the market research for your 12 marks, which is part of activity, activity one, listen to what the examiner is saying. Do not just repeat, copy out, <laughs> just fill the pages with information lifted straight from the research pack. That's not analysis. That's not justification. Draw out the key themes, pick out pieces of data, explain why it's important to the case of your business, what it might mean and the implications for your marketing aims and objectives and your campaign. And don't forget to leave enough time to constantly, sorry, to, uh, to comment on the appropriateness and the reliability of that primary market research. Too many students are missing that bit out. Some easy marks to be had there by doing it. And lastly, just because you've written your 12 mark piece in activity one, that doesn't mean you can't continue to refer to the research back throughout your reports, both reports, activity one and activity two. So just use RP to refer back to it. It may be that you want to link to the to the research pack in your marketing mix, or perhaps uh, comment on the RP when it comes to a costing that you're using in your campaign costs in activity two. So don't be afraid to continually use and refer to the research pack where relevant in both your two reports. There we go. Wow, look, 45 minutes. So we've been rattling on. I've been rambling on here about marketing research. So that's that bit done, I think, for activity one. 
Uh, we're taking a break over half term, but our next session, we're going to spend some time looking at what's known as the justification. It's the last part of activity one. We're going to take a, a long look at SWOT analysis and product lifecycle. We're not going to touch Pestle because I don't think you should be using Pestle, but you can if you want. But SWOT analysis, product lifecycle as the two models that I think are best suited to providing uh, or to tackling the justification part, the last part of part one to maximize the marks you get from those. If you found this session useful, give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Recommend it to your mates or your teachers. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you again for the next live session on unit two. So for now, see you later.